G'day, my name is Andrew Lukey, and I've developed a new Clipsal CBUS driver for Control 4 OS 3.2 or above, known as CBUS Power Tools. So what previously would take a few hours to program using the extra vegetables drivers can now take a few minutes with this driver. And same capabilities that were added to OS 3.2 make this driver even faster now. And I'd like to thank everyone at Control 4 who was involved with adding the new API um, so that uh, third party developers like myself can take advantage of it. So Clipsal CBUS is a lighting system um, designed for a wide variety of jobs, including industrial, residential, commercial, it supports a wide variety of modules. This driver hooks into the existing uh, legacy extra vegetables driver, so you can still use their drivers alongside this one. Um, this driver can automatically import the XML and CGL files to expedite installation. So what you do um, to be able to use this driver, just jump into your web browser. The website is uh, CBUS link. Um, dot com. So you can just basically scroll down. <clears throat> now this is a pre-release still, so this is pre-release 5 that this video is made on. Um, just download it. Uh, there'll be a whole bunch of C4Z files in it um, that you can basically drop into your control for documents uh, drivers directory um, as per normal. And once you've done that, you basically just need to jump into Composer. So, okay, so from Composer here, um, Basically, we've already added our CBUS Power Tools driver, so it's just here. Um, you also do still need the extra vegetables gateway driver. So if you're using a serial interface, um, make sure that you add that. Um, if you're using a uh, network interface, um, you just need to add that instead. And um, just go into connections and make sure that they're hooked in. So as you can see, um, yeah, we're hooked into that already. <coughs> Right now, um, it will automatically give you a Power Tools uh, cloud address, so just uh, copy that. You can also set the password here, so I've made an easy password, but you should never actually do that um, on a major installation, because if you do something like that, someone can control your lights remotely. Um, so, so don't do that. I've just done that for testing purposes. Yep, so from the browser here, we will paste it. Go. Log in. Okay, so as you can see here, there's not much to see. Go to import. So, okay, so to import files basically. So we'll go into Clipsal Toolbus, or Toolkit, sorry. Yep, so this is an example job basically. So this was a four story uh, job. There's about 174 lighting circuits. So using the extra vegetables driver, you'd basically have to add all these drivers. You'd need to make sure that you add the correct driver type. You'd have to name them correctly. Um, so there's about 174 drivers. Um, but what you basically want to do is you want to basically grab the tags file from this. So we'll just uh, open this up here. Copy it. Okay, so now we've got our tags here. So you basically just need to jump into the web browser again. So you can basically use XML tags. So that's what I'm doing. XML tags will also allow you to import the module type. Um, so every every CBUS job has got a, a, like a tags file. So the tags control has all the units, um, all the groups, all the addresses, everything that you need. If a Sparky commissions your job, you can just uh, grab that file from him. Um, as an alternative, you can use a CGL file, which are used by Wises and other such systems. Um, XML tags are definitely preferred. So we'll just paste it here. Click the import button. Oops. So it's importing. You don't need to do this, but I'll just reload the page. Password again. Okay, now if we go to status, you'll notice it's filled up. <coughs> So what this driver also allows you to do is it allows you to keep your Control 4 programming separate from the CBUS programmer. So you, you, the person who's programming up the Control 4 doesn't even need to know anything about CBUS. They just need that XML file. Um, okay, so from here, um, so we've actually named the, the lighting with good names. We've got plenty down here. Change the type, for instance. Um, so let's say that you know it's imported the, correct, the incorrect type from the file. You can basically change it to a light relay instead. Now the dimmers and the relays have tested pretty well in this uh, in this uh, release, 
um, including with advanced lighting scenes and everything. Um, so I feel pretty safe to use it. If you don't want to provision them, you just press do not provision. Um, you'd set the same thing as well. If you do plan to use the extra vegetables drivers instead, if you want to test them, you can test them from here. If you want to rename them to something else, you can rename them from here as well and it'll pass through. Uh, now the 113, for instance, here and the lighting, you can also change these as well, but these are basically just the, uh, the name of the application and the uh, application number. So once you've done that, Got a huge collection here. We will go back into Composer. So from Composer, you can see that Power Tools is empty. So what we want to do basically now is we want to tell it to provision all these uh, devices. So we will just scroll up, go to provisioning, provision config, go back to Composer. As you can see, it's getting items. So it's going to go crazy for a while um, and start adding devices. So similar to how Sonos works, um, now we've also got the auto add capability. So previously, uh, Control 4 added the capabilities a while ago. Um, certified drivers were allowed to use it. Um, we weren't as third party developers, but now um, thanks to them, um, it's been opened up as of OS 3.2. So if you're running uh, OS 3, um, we actually strongly recommend upgrading to OS 3.2 as soon as possible, because uh, you're gonna see more and more drivers that make use of these capabilities. And you'll actually see how quick it is for all these things to be commissioned. Now, because we're adding over 100 drivers in this case, um, as you can imagine, normally it would take ages. So even just double clicking, you know, the button to kind of add all these drivers manually um, and do them correctly as the correct device type um, does take a while. But the new change in OS 3.2, and you don't need to be running OS 3.2, you can still add the drivers manually, um, but it's better off to be using it so it does it automatically. Um, so it's adding them autom automatically now, very slowly. Once that's done, what it will actually do is it'll go back, it'll change the application number, it'll change the group number on that, on that driver, and it will change the name to match whatever was in the import file. So the big advantage of this in practice is that it's not just time saving, cutting and pasting, but it also reduces the time that you need for testing as well. Um, so the big issue with the with copying and pasting is that if you make a mistake, you won't even know. You've got to basically go through every light and test it. And then when it doesn't work, you've got to spend the extra time going back to working out what the correct circuit number should be. Um, this will fix all that. <clears throat> now, because I'm adding it all on EA1 and on a slow laptop, sometimes Composer will crash at the end. Um, but that's not an issue because it will still add all these uh, all these devices. Now I'm actually working on making it um, so that it renames the drivers as it's adding it, and when you do that, it's actually it should be a lot more stable. So on a on a CA10, this process will be a lot faster actually. So while this is happening, uh, we can actually jump into to the control page. Um, so as you can see, so it actually calculates how many drivers of each that you need. And you can see here it's dropping quickly um, as it's adding the drivers automatically. So if you're not using OS 3.2, if you're using OS 3 normally, um, you can add these drivers manually. You just need to make sure that this column at the end basically says zero. If it's not zero, um, it's not really an issue. But what will actually happen is that um, you just, uh, it just won't provision them all. So as you can see, it does take a while for Composer to catch up. Um, all of a sudden it will just uh, have like uh, 10 or so drivers get added, you know, in a second. Um, it's already starting to rename the ones that are there. So on here, basically, just to let you know, so we've got an application log, so if you are going to test lights, you can basically see what's happening. Um, it'll grab the status updates from that. Uh, you've got, say, status, um, so you can basically check the real-time status of every circuit here, if you want. <coughs> Import, so you've got um, importing as well. Uh, so like I said, XML or CGL, XML strongly preferred, provisioning, under provisioning, so you've basically got, uh, you know, how, how many of each circuit you've got. So in this case, it's actually, we'll actually be provisioning 64 plus 73 circuits. Let's just see if it's done. Nope, still going. 
about slash support. So this actually has my details on it. So if you want to contact me, you can contact me by email, um, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, if you want to donate, which would be great. Um, I've also put a Bitcoin Ripple and a PayPal donation link. Okay, so let's go to Composer, see how we're going. So like I said, um, on my system, um, because I'm running an EA1 and I'm running, I'm actually setting up like 150 circuits or so um, within a few, within about a minute or so. Uh, it sometimes the Composer itself will crash. Um, that doesn't mean that the controller, like the EA1 itself will not crash, but it's actually Composer that might. And I think it's, it actually happens uh, during the process of renaming them all, but um, I plan to speak to Control4 and uh, find out basically. Okay, still doing it. But I think at the end of the day, it just uh, it's possibly just a race condition or something like that. Um, <coughs> yep, so there you go. That's happened, but when I reopen it, it'll basically just work. So we'll just reopen it now. That doesn't mean that it stopped importing or anything. It just basically means that the uh, composer's closed. And I expect that to be, to be fixed uh, fairly soon, so. The other thing that I can do as well is um, I might add some extra delays, which might help with that um, issue as well. Yep, so Composer Pro is just reloading. <clears throat> Like I said, um, when you're doing a lot less circuits, um, it's not an issue. In this case, um, it's basically because I'm adding 500 of them. So it's honestly, it's no big surprise that this is happening. Or, sorry, 150, yep. So you go. 100. So that's uh, pretty much all that mattered. If you go into one, for instance, um, you can see the application 56, the group is 109. Um, we're going to another one, fire admission, for instance. 56, 167. Now we've actually put these in a separate room. Um, so what we'll do is that um, the reason that we do that is because if you want to delete some afterwards, for instance, you can just drag them into the rooms and then just delete the whole room. And if you've got a hundred that you don't need, just delete it straight away. The ideal way is that you do select them to do not provision though. Um, that just makes management a lot easier. Um, so as you can see, all the names are correct. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. So now I can pretty much just refresh the navigators um, and they'll come up on the phones. Um, obviously, if you've got a lot of lighting circuits, you do want to use a, a faster unit. So an EA1, it's not really ideal for this for this many devices. Um, you, you do probably want to use a, um, an EA5 or a CA10 if possible. All right, yep, so that's a demonstration. Um, so yeah, um, if you do want to get in contact, uh, that's the web page here for uh, CBUS Link. Um, and that's also got my other contact details, including my LinkedIn um, and uh, any other ways to contact me. Um, now. And yeah, just uh, any proms, uh, yeah, feel free to give me a call or um, or an email or drop me a bell. Um, you know where to find me. Um, and to, once again, I just want to thank everyone at uh, Control4 who I have bugged to uh, try to get this uh, this appy added um, so that driver developers such as myself can use it. Um, as per normal, um, I'll post any updates to the web page as well um, and also to my uh, Facebook accounts. Um, so. Best of luck to you the driver. Um, hopefully it saves you a lot of time. So this whole video is pretty much uh, just 13 minutes, including explanation. Um, like I said though, um, on, a, on an actual job, so this actual job took uh, hours to commission, um, just copying and pasting back and forth. And it's even slower when you don't have an external, uh, have an external monitor um, and a proper mouse. All right, so um, best of luck and, uh, and hopefully, uh, and give it a try and um, see how you go. All right, thanks.